Hello and welcome. In today's lesson, we'll be exploring two very common and powerful laboratory techniques used to map proteins in the brain, immunohistochemistry and microscopy. You may already have some idea of what microscopy means, but let's start by defining what immunohistochemistry means. It sure does sound complicated, but if we break this term down into its individual components, we can come to understand it more clearly. Immuno refers to the immune system. Histo refers to tissues found in the body. And chemistry refers to, well, chemistry. Now we can understand that the method is really just about using the properties of the immune system to study the distribution of chemicals, in this case proteins, in a particular organ or tissue. At the heart of immunohistochemistry are the incredibly specialized proteins that comprise the workforce of our immune system, antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that exhibit very specific binding behavior because they only bind to a specific target molecule or antigen and will not bind to any other molecules. Scientists can use this binding behavior to their advantage by attaching a fluorescent marker to an antibody so that the location of this antibody will be visible once the fluorescent marker is activated and visualized under the appropriate microscope. But why is it important that we be able to see where an antibody is located in a tissue? It's important to take a step back and note that when performing this kind of immunohistochemistry, what we're really interested in isn't the antibody, but the antigen that the antibody is targeting and binding to. In fact, Scientists in the laboratory are the ones that actually expose the tissue to the antibody, meaning the antibody is not naturally found in the tissue. The point of bathing tissue in an antibody carrying a fluorescent marker is to indirectly locate the antigen targeted by that antibody. The antigen in this case is usually a protein that researchers are interested in studying its distribution throughout the brain. For example, is this a protein found in a particular brain region only? or is it spread throughout different parts of the brain? So to summarize, immunohistochemical staining involves exposing a tissue to a specialized antibody, one that's carrying a fluorescent marker that we are able to visualize for the purpose of tracking where the target antigen, which is a protein, is located in that tissue. The entire process can take anywhere from a few hours to several days and involves multiple steps, starting with the acquisition of the tissue sample. A special instrument called a cryostat is commonly used to create precisely measured and extremely thin slices of brain tissue for the purposes of immunohistochemical staining. You can think of a cryostat as like a freezing cold deli slicer. The blade is contained within an enclosed bin that can be adjusted to maintain a desired thickness for each slice of the tissue, usually only a few micrometers in thickness. Once the tissue samples are prepared, they can then be bathed in a liquid solution that contains the specialized antibodies tagged with the fluorescent marker. If the antigen is present in the tissue sample, the antibodies will bind tightly and irreversibly to all locations where the antigen is detected. Several washing steps typically follow this antibody exposure so that any residual antibodies lingering in or on the tissue can be removed so as not to influence the results when examining the tissue under a microscope. One of the final steps in this technique involves visualizing the stained tissue under a fluorescent microscope, a particular type of microscope that is capable of picking up the fluorescent markers attached to the antibodies on the tissue. Many modern fluorescent microscopes are also compatible with software programs that allow researchers to count the individual number of cells stained with the antibody for the purposes of quantifying how much of the target antigen is found in that tissue sample. So now it's your turn. In this activity, you will be guiding students through a simulation of this immunohistochemical staining technique, as well as the subsequent visualization of their results. You and your students will also have the opportunity to use light microscopes to examine actual stained tissue samples so that students can appreciate the similarities and differences between their simulation results and the actual product of immunohistochemical staining. For this activity, you'll need the following materials. Printed copies of worksheets 3A and 3B for each student, assorted containers and colors of Play-Doh to divide among student groups, one plastic brain mold for each student group, or alternatively, you can share a single tray with different molds for the entire class, 
one plastic knife per student group, one ruler per student group, and if available, light microscopes and sample stained tissue slides. Prior to beginning the activity, we strongly recommend that you dedicate time to engage students with the vocabulary for this lesson, as well as address any student questions from other lessons to ensure students are comfortable with the terminology and prepare for the simulation. The lesson plan provides a number of options for how best to do this, including, but not limited to, showing students pictures or animations of antibody and antigen binding, and or playing videos that cover this material. Once you feel that your students have a strong enough understanding of the vocabulary and foundational concepts, you can walk them through the simulation using the step-by-step -step instructions and supplementary images included in the curriculum. First, students will create their own brain molds out of Play-Doh and then practice slicing these molds into half or one centimeter thick slices to mirror the process of slicing a frozen brain into micrometer thin slices using a cryostat. Next, each student will select a number between one and four with each number corresponding to a unique set of brain regions or structures illustrated on worksheet 3A. They will use invisible ink to shade in the regions that correspond to their chosen number, emulating the process of bathing brain tissue slices in an antibody solution targeting a specific antigen. Once they've shaded in all the regions corresponding to their number, they may then activate the invisible ink to reveal the results of their antibody staining. To conclude the activity portion of this lesson, Students may have the opportunity to observe actual brain slices that were stained for various proteins under a simple light microscope, assuming that pre-stained slides and light microscopes are available. You may wish to have students record their observations on worksheet 3B during this exercise. It is critical that students either be instructed on how to properly calibrate a light microscope prior to completing this exercise, or the instructor has properly calibrated and focused all light microscopes available such that students do not need to make any adjustments to view the sample slides. After guiding students through the simulation of immunohistochemical staining and visualization, we recommend dedicating time to ask students the guiding questions included in the curriculum, or any other questions you feel are important to help solidify student understanding. An extension of this simulation activity may include having students consider, and perhaps even simulate, the ways in which these staining techniques can be utilized for other structures in the body outside of the central nervous system. It may also be fruitful to have students discuss in small groups or as a class the ways in which these staining techniques may fail to capture what scientists are trying to study and how scientists can ensure they are not observing inappropriate staining due to residual antibodies lingering in the tissue. Once you are ready to measure student comprehension of the lesson, Provide each student with a printed copy of Worksheet 3C, on which students will be instructed to answer a series of questions testing their understanding of the activity. Please note that this assessment may not be suitable for younger, preliterate students, and some students may require additional assistance with this assessment. Thanks for watching! Be sure to check out our other lesson videos included with this curriculum.